my name is Carrie Means and I'm here to talk to you about the realtor mindset and really think about that you're running a business. It's so easy for us to get caught up in just the day to day or so we're not planning ahead for like taxes and doing a budget and that type of thing. Or it's also really simple for us to get so caught up in the business side of it that we miss the people to people side of it that we need to do, especially when we work from our houses. So you have to think about things like communication. How are you communicating with your clients? Are you answering the phone? Have you set up a plan for your phone if you go on vacation? Because we still have to have boundaries in our business. Otherwise, we're working 24 hours, seven days a week. I had an agent that came back from her pre-licensing class that was told if somebody called at five in the morning, she had to answer the phone. And I'm like, no, we still get a life. We still get to be able to um, have some time zones. Now our market sometimes kind of tells us how we have to do our time frames. If we're in a multiple offer market, you might have to plan a little bit for that and stuff, but your family time is just as important. I lost my husband three and a half years ago and it really taught me that you know you have to take that time for family because there isn't always time later with it. So we have to think about these things when we're setting up our business and how we want to run our business with it. And some people, the so solution is a team for it. Other people, I have like Mr. Number that tells me when it's crank calls that come across my phone as an app. And I also use Google Voice. So if I'm out of town, I can still get my personal calls, but I can forward my business to a partner that's able to help me with it. And some of the other things we really have to think about in our business is keeping up to date on the latest trends. So, you know, read those articles. Do you know what the latest tax laws are? Is your association offering a tax class that helps you? Because it changed majorly this last year and the government didn't even know how it changed besides us to be able to interpret it, how it changed. So you really need to check and make sure you're staying with the latest trends. One of the latest trends that I'm seeing is, you know, you go into houses, you're being recorded. Well, all of a sudden you've lost all your buyer's negotiation power. If your buyer's in there saying, oh my God, it's the best house, I want that no matter what the price, the seller just heard that. So you have to really, you know, attend classes, attend things with your association. So you're seeing what the latest trend is. Really look at what your business is. You know, are you talking to your clients? Do they, are you communicating with them how they want to be communicated? Some people like text. My parents still have a flip phone and they don't text. So that is not going to be the best way to communicate with them. And sometimes you just need to pick up a phone and talk to each other because if you're not, you've got a lot of miscommunication. Text has no emotion to it. So you really don't know what's important to your client if it's just texting. So really ask your clients, how do I want to be communicated with? How often do I want to be communicated with? You know, are they in the beginning stages, the end stages? Have they done the prequal? All those type of things. So those are all ways that you have to look at how do I want my business ran so that it works best for them and for me because like I said it's just as important to have your time in it. Some of the other things that we need to look at is your time management and your organization. You really have to know your personality. So there are some people that have incredible time management and it's not an issue for them. There's others that get distracted by the littlest things. So if you're working from home and you have children, do you have someone that comes and babysits for you for a couple hours so that you're able to really focus on that business? Or do you know you work during their nap time? Another thing is, is if you're working from home, it's really easy to get distracted by, oh, there's the laundry that needs to be done, or whoops, my favorite TV show comes on, I gotta watch it, or oops, you know, I really need to dust or vacuum or whatever it is that we need to do. So do you set a specific part of your time away for business? Do you have your house set up for you to run your business? Are you a person that needs to be in an office with nothing else around to distract you? Or are you a person that can sit on their couch and work off their computer? Because with this day and age with computers, we don't need to have an actual desk unless that's your personality. I had an agent once that worked with me, she needed to go into an office. That was how her focus was. Are you a person that needs an office? Or if you go to the office, are you one of the social butterflies that is so busy talking to everyone, you don't actually get 
any of your business done. So you have to look at that. And you are independent contractors, so nobody else is in charge of your time except you. So you've got to really go with, how much time do I want to spend with the business? Is it important for me to go to the gym every morning between 8.30 and 9.30? If it is, set your schedule up before then. Your clients don't need to know you're going to the gym. You can just tell them you have an appointment and that will work for them. So really look at what's important to you. If you know it's important for you to pick up your child at three o'clock, Schedule your schedule around you picking up your appointment at three o'clock because if you don't set those boundaries up front, you're gonna get distracted with them and you're gonna find the more you do it, the more people keep taking advantage of it or not taking advantage of it, but using that time and you're not doing what you really did and what's important to you. We became real estate agents and realtors for a purpose and it's a lot of times it's so people can set their own schedule or be more at home at time with their family, but you've got to set that up so that it works for you. And then again, back to the organization. What does it look like for your house to be organized for it's a great workplace for you? I have a paperless office, so I can sit on my couch and work, but I don't like paper. I have a file folder that's about um, 10 inches deep and everything goes in there and at the end of the year everything gets scanned. I don't have boxes around my office because I don't like paper. Some people have to have paper. Know that about your personality. And this is the biggest thing with anything with real estate. Know your personality with it. Just because it worked for Joe Blow doesn't mean it's going to work for you if that's not what your personality is. So if you don't match your personality and know your personality, you're going to figure it out pretty soon because otherwise you're just wasting time or spinning circles and it just doesn't work. You know, there's some people that have to call their clients every single month. Me personally, I'm not one of those client people. I'm not, I have other ways that I communicate with them and make sure I keep in touch. But I also know my clients are aware of it. And if they tell me they need that touch every month, then I adjust and I put it on my calendar so I don't forget to do it. And that's another thing that's gonna be really important to you. Figure out what your calendar looks like because mine is electronic, but mine has to be where everything's matched up. And if it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. And my, per my family's aware of that as well as um, my clients are aware of it. And if I don't, I will tell you I double book every single time and then I gotta fix that problem, which is then more of my time spent. So really, again, you have to figure out what your personality is and works for you and not just listen to how everybody else does it. Listen to them for ideas but only use what's going to actually work for you.